When we have a large React form, it's not convenient or efficient to use a separate use state hook or create a separate change handler for each controlled input. Let's learn how to handle this form more efficiently. Hello and welcome. I'm Dave. Today we will learn how to handle all of the inputs in a React form with only one change handler and one use state hook. I'll provide links to example source code and all resources in the description below. For our starter code today, I've started a new React project with Create React App, and you can see the file tree over here. I've cleaned out a lot of the things we don't normally use. I've got a basic index.js file, and I re haven't really changed anything there. I have added some CSS, and you'll be able to view that in the code repository linked in the description. Here's the app.js, and you can see I've created a components directory with a form.js component and a billing.js component. And really that's what we see over here is the form with billing, of course, inserted into it as a separate component. So we could change out the form if we had a multi-step form, which I may cover in the future. But today what we want to cover is just how to handle all of these inputs. There's seven different controlled inputs on this one screen with just one handler. And of course, just using the use state hook once. You can see in the app component, I'm just importing the form component and returning that. Now we could have a larger app here, so that's why I've got this structured this way, because we could have a separate form component that is just part of an app. So here's the app with the form. And then when we go to the form, Right now, I'm importing the billing component, which has all of these inputs, and then I haven't added the code here. So this is what we're going to go over today. I can show you quickly the billing component, and it has props, it gets data, and the handle change handler. And from there, you can see each one of the inputs uses this handle change. So for the on change, it's always handle change. We're just using one handler there. And then of course we have data for the form. And as you can tell here, it says data dot bill first name, it's going to be an object. So let's start adding some code into our form component to see how all of this comes together. I'm going to start at the top because we also need to import use state and there it is in our list. And after we get use state, then we can start using that right away at the top of the component. Now I'm going to paste this in because it would be a lot to type and you can get it from my repo or you can just pause the video and type in what you see here. But what we've got is data and set data. And here we're using the use state hook. And then it's got all of the different inputs. And you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just for the billing information. Now we could have a separate screen that would have shipping information as well. And we could handle that all in the same hook. But right now we'll just do the billing screen. So we've got all of this state here and it's pretty much all an empty string for each one of the inputs. After that, I'm going to put in a handler for the form. And when we handle this form right now, we're just going to prevent the default so it doesn't reload the page, of course. And then we're just going to log to the console what the current state is that's stored in our data. But of course, this would submit to an API or wherever we wanted to send the data if it was an actual application. And now let's replace our return by creating some content first and then just returning that content. And it looks like it's scrolling off the screen here so I could press Alt Z and now we wrap that and you can see everything we've got. So our content is our JSX. You can see it is a form that we have right here. I'm just putting a heading in the form. Of course, we'll, we are calling the handle submit handler right here that will log the data to the console. We've also put in our billing component and we're passing in the data and the handle change handler that we have not created yet, but we will. And then we've got a button. Now when a form just has one button, it defaults to being the submit button. So I don't even have to put type equals submit here. I've just added a class name that responds to some of the CSS that I have included. And then we have the return content. So what we're left with is needing to create this handle change handler. So let's scroll back up above and underneath the handle submit, let's start creating our handle change handler. So I'll say const handle change and we'll have an event and you could put this E for event inside of parentheses or not. I just am not doing that right now and it works either way. 
And then inside of the function, what we I want to put what we normally have first. So typically, if we were just handling a change for one controlled input and it had its own use state hook instead of using an object for the state. So imagine having a use state for first name, another use state for last name, and so on. Then we would just be changing that one value, and we would have our set data, and then we would put in the e dot target dot value and that's how we would do it and we could handle that all in one line actually however this handler will handle it for each one of these different pieces of state or each one of these properties within our state object you could say so i'm going to start out by defining the type so i'll say const type and that equals the e dot target dot type we're going to need that information and then let's go ahead and get the name as well and that's equal to e dot target dot name. Now this is something to really point out here because it needs to match what we have in our state, the bill first name, bill last name, bill address one, and so on. So that name, e.target.name.name needs to match. And I can show you on an input here in our billing component where we've set that. Notice each input is going to have a name attribute as well as an ID and some of the other things we've set like type. However, if I come down to the next one, it also has a name. And it doesn't matter what type of input it is. Most of these are text inputs. We do have a select right here for the state with all 50 US states in it. But any one of these will have a name. So even if I scroll down here, let's find that select. Here it is. It still has a name attribute. So that needs to be uh, identical to what you put in the state like we have over here bill state bill zip code and so on and now back in the handle change function after we have the type and name here is the equation we need or the logic comparison that we need and I'll say const value and this is going to equal a comparison and we're going to compare that type we defined and say is it equal to checkbox because checkbox handles things just a little differently. So we'll say if it is equal to checkbox, and this is a ternary statement, then we're going to use e.target.checked. That's where we would need to get our value. Otherwise, it's still going to be e.target.value. And that's how we can set the value. Now, once we have the value and we've determined what it is, then we can say set data and we can use the previous data is what I'll call it. We could just say previous. Sometimes you'll see this referred to as current. It doesn't really matter what you call it, just so you know it's the previous state values. And we're using this function here inside of our set state function, which is set data. And now we're going to need parentheses because we're using an object and then curly braces. And let's spread in that previous data and then let's overwrite whatever this value is. And we get the value by putting our name in brackets. Remember, we've defined name up here, so it's the target name. And then we'll once again have a colon and then have the value. Now this wrapped down to a separate line. So what we could do, if we have shorter lines and we want to see this all kind of spread out, is put this on separate lines here and look at it this way. Because you're maybe more used to seeing objects like this where the properties and values each are on their own line. Well, we're spreading in all of the properties here and then we're just overriding whichever one we are receiving and we're determining this through the name and the value that we calculate here. So we abstracted some of these things instead of having to have a separate use state and a separate handler for each one. Now this handle change handler will handle most of your common inputs that you see like what we have here in the forms. However, there are three types I wanna make you aware of where you would have to modify this. That is a file input, an email input, and a select input like you see here, except they all accept a multiple attribute. And if you set multiple on those, you have to handle that a little bit differently. I'm not going to go into that here because this will handle most everything that you would run into unless you run into one of those three inputs that has that multiple attribute set. And from there, you need to handle those just a little bit differently. In my recent Mern stack series, we did use a select with the multiple attribute. So if you wanna see how I handled that, you might check out that Mern stack series. Right now, there's one other thing we should do here for our form and that is to handle when we can submit the data. So we can provide just a little bit of validation here. So underneath our handler, 
I want to have two extra lines here. And once is to say const, and I'm going to destructure our data. And I'm going to pull the second billing address out of it. And then I'm going to spread other props. And this actually puts all of the other values and properties there inside of this other props. And so then we can just say equals data. And why I want to do that is because this second address line is not required. All of the others are required. So we want to make sure we have information in all of these except the second address line before we allow the submit button to be enabled. And so now we can just check that by going ahead and defining a can save variable is what I'll call this. And we'll set can save equal to a new array. And I'm going to spread in and use object values and pass in our data, I'm sorry, not our data, our other props object that we just created. And then at the end of this array, I'm going to use the every method and then say Boolean. So what we're going to do is make sure every value inside of this array has something that it's not an empty string and then it would return true essentially. So we can save that and now we can use our can save variable that we've created inside of a disable attribute here. So let's set disabled equal to the opposite of can save. And we chose the opposite because this would not be true if any one of the values here was empty. So if then it says false, then we want this to be true because that would be disabled equals true. Now I'm going to save these changes and we'll go ahead and open a new tab over here in our uh, browser and then I'll use control back tick to open a terminal. I'll type npm start because we were just looking at an example before. Now I'll close the example and we should get this running. So, oh, it says it's on another port. I didn't close it fast enough or maybe I need to go ahead Yep, I'll control C in my other instance of VS Code. So that if you ever get that message, that's what's happening. You're running another instance somewhere. So now NPM start, and it should start up here in the browser. And as soon as it's running, we'll check everything out. Okay, we have our form. Notice the submit button is disabled. We can't use it right now. We haven't filled in the information we need. So I'll start filling in some information. I'm Dave, and notice here when I don't meet the pattern that I've set on these inputs, and you can check that out in the billing component, I have set a pattern on most of these like this right here, and that's a regex pattern. And just when it's a very simple one for what I'm doing here. So if I need at least a couple of letters entered in for last name, it would be a very short last name, but at least a couple. And when it's not, it instantly has this invalid class. And I'm styling that with CSS. So you can tell it is currently invalid. So just worth checking out in the repository if you want to. Here I'm going to put 555. Hollywood Boulevard, that would be nice. I'm not going to put anything in this second address line. Of course, everything you currently see before I enter information is a placeholder attribute that we see like you see right here for this input here in the billing component. And now let's go city, I'll say Los Angeles where Hollywood is, California, 55555. And now the submit button's good to go. But if I delete this zip code, Notice submit button is disabled. So we need to have information in six out of the seven inputs. And that's what we did with this last piece here in the form where we set the can save value. And then of course I can drag this over to full screen and then I'll open up our browser and I'll get the console over here, clear that out. I'm just going to submit and then we see our state over here as an object, and we've got all the information we put in the form. So in the next tutorial, I'm going to show how you can make this a multi-step form with billing info, shipping info, and possibly some opt-in stuff like subscribing to a newsletter. That's coming up in the next one. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.